So today, of course, we have a big Nintendo Direct happening at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm really looking forward to it. Make sure you guys come back to the channel because we will be doing a reaction video to this event. But Nintendo gave us a little appetizer, a little sample, a little morsel for us to enjoy with some new NES and SNES games for the Nintendo Switch Online service. And... Yeah, they're, they're, they're kind of questionable games. Like, you know, there's one NES game, there's three Super Nintendo games. I don't think I've played any of them before, so this will be my first time playing them. And as per usual, I will be making fun of these games if they suck, because, I, I, you know, why not? It's it's funny. You, you guys enjoy it, and you guys enjoy me crapping on your childhood favorites. But without any further ado, let's just hop into this. We're going to take a look at the one NES game, which is Fire and Ice. I believe that was a song by Noel, who was a freestyle artist, and of course, Fire and Ice was the name of the WCW tag team, I believe, with Scott Norton and uh, Ice Train. So that's cool. We got a we got a story going on. Now, this is one of those NES games where it has like a really, really high price. I believe this is like $150 cart only. And I, I just have a funny and sneaking suspicion that this isn't going to be a $150 quality game. We have some sort of story going on. There's Grandma. Grandma's nice and toasty by the fireplace. Good for Grandma. So let's just hop into this. This is a puzzle game where you knock like blocks into stuff. I, I know something about the game. All right, yeah, I did it. I beat the game. That's, that's gotta be like a world record right there for beating the game. You know, I don't hate games like this. Um, puzzle games can be very fun. I love Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. I think it's an awesome game, but I'm just not really big into games like this. Um, I feel like this block is gonna pretend, oh, it didn't crush me. See, I, I messed up my world record time right there by messing around too long. I'm sure the game does, of course, get harder. You gotta, you gotta think outside the box. You gotta jump around and stuff like that. You know, the music is fine. The, the graphics are actually pretty decent. But like I said, if you're not a fan of this style of puzzle game, I, I just don't think it's gonna be a game that you're gonna wanna like rush out there and check out. Oh, hey, two seconds, come on. Come on, who's doing these levels in two seconds? You know what? Maybe I really love this game. And maybe I'm like an expert at this game. And I need to play this game more. Uh-oh. I trapped myself. And this, folks, <laughs> this could be the end of us. Because I don't see myself trying to figure this, this out. Because I, I don't know. Cool music. Nice visuals. I'm sure it's a fantastic game. It, oh, okay. So I can make blocks appear. Oh, that's kind of neat. Like fire to ice. I taught you with my love. But burning don't stop till the walls come crumbling down. I'm pretty sure that's how the Noel song goes. So why can't I make a block here? Why can't I like jump? All right, cool. So this was Fire and Ice. $150 on the NES or free on the Nintendo Switch Online service. Not a, not a terrible game, but not really something for me. But let's check out the Super Nintendo games next. Some good Gatorade. What's up with that sponsorship Gatorade? Hook me up with some Berry Gatorade. Fierce. All right, so we have three Super Nintendo games. One is actually a Super Famicom game, so it's actually two to one. Prehistoric Man, Doomsday Warrior, and Psycho Dream. Like I said, I think I've played Prehistoric Man before. If not, I've played Chuck Rock. We have Titus making this game, or Titus. You know, Titus is kind of a company that gets a bad rap. I like Automobile Lamborghini, I believe was the name of it, on the N64. That was a Titus game. Of course, they also did Superman 64. So quality is kind of all over the place when it comes to Titus. But yeah, you can see here, small caveman in a village. I, I feel like caveman is a word that's going to be sort of um like a canceled word on twitter like you won't be able to call people caveman anymore i feel like that is coming what do you think <laughs> all right so we got to shout we could jump we can club sam before we start our quest i think we should give you a little train i don't want to do training see this isn't bad this isn't bad at all it's not good per se you know i would say the controls are a little slippery I don't like how some of this, like, that looks like it belongs in the foreground, not the background. But, you know, I digress. How do I get those? Maybe I should have done the training. He jumps very high. Ooh, let's get the cake. We get the we get the points. We get the bonus. This isn't bad. The animation is fine. You know, I will say the controls are definitely a bit slippery. You know, he moves, like, pretty fast. I can see the jumping mechanics in the later levels being very 
sort of all over the place because of the fact that, you know, when you bounce off of something, that's fine. Um, nice animation. It's not, see, like, that's, that's troublesome, though. Like, I don't think the jumping feels good at all. I don't feel like I'm in control of my jumps the way I want to be, and that's kind of problematic. And like I said, in the early levels, that's not going to be a big deal. I almost burped there. In the early levels, that's not going to be a big deal. But in the later levels, it's kind of like, you know, I'm sure there's going to be some very precise platforming needed. Why am I collecting burgers? Why are there burgers in a prehistoric land is, is a good question. That's a nice jump there. Okay, how was I supposed to know? I'm done with this. Next game. All right, so this is Psycho Dream. This was a Super Famicom game that never came stateside. We have two different characters to choose from. Very gripping story right here. But really, it's all about the gameplay. And from what I saw from this game, it looked like an interesting looking game. Kind of reminded me of El Viento a bit. Um, just maybe in terms of graphics and styling and stuff. But, you know, this is an interesting looking game here. Our character is much slower than Sam from Prehistoric. Okay, that's cool. Get out of here. Get out of here. Freaking bugs. I mean, I, I, okay, here we go. Here we go. We're leveling up. Our, our attack is now bigger. So it's going to be one of those sorts of games where you're constantly just getting upgraded attacks for your character. Uh, the visuals are nice, a bit simplistic. Controls feel good. Um, I do feel like I have good control over our character here, more so than our prehistoric friend. Obviously, games have come a long way since the prehistoric age of Titus. So, not, not bad. Not bad so far. A nice little attack here. I don't really know where to go. I'm going to assume we go down. And finally, we're playing Doomsday Warrior. Um, I've never even heard of this game before. We'll, we'll go up against P-Lump. I'm a guy that kind of looks like Psycho Clown from uh, AAA Wrestling. And this game looked pretty assy. Um, not going to lie, like it looked terrible. And I have a feeling that this is not going to be very good. So we can jump. We have a jump button. Punch. Kick. This is... Who... This game came out in 1992, so, like, there were fighting games on the market. Maybe not in the home console market, but at least in the arcades to sort of give you an indication of, like, hey, this is where fighting games are heading. And, like, you know, we're talking, like, Street Fighter. Oh, what the hell was that? This is, duh. Ugh, like, the, the background is ugly. P-Lump. That was kind of neat. Like, what? I don't understand, though. Like, uh, our special moves, just, like, they break the game like that, and you, you got to stop and do a little cutscene. Like, this dude is destroying me. The animation sucks. The characters themselves, like, why are they so small? Like, I get it, you know, sprite work on the Super Nintendo. You got you to gotta work within your realm. But, like, ugh. This is bad. Who is deciding that these games... <laughs> who is deciding that these games are coming to the Nintendo Switch online service? Like, who is sitting there and just like, you know what? This is the game. Doomsday Warrior is the game that the kids want. You know, screw Super Mario RPG, Earthbound, you know, all of those games, Turtles, stuff like that. No, 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 no. They want Doomsday Warrior featuring Psycho Clown and P-Lump. P-Lump. This is, this is rough. If this is any indication of the Nintendo Direct today, I'm taking a nap. I'm going to sleep because this is not good. You need to do something with this online service because it's, 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 it's not working. It's not working in the way you should. It's a very simple thing. Like, you have NES and Super NES games to choose from. So why are we choosing games that literally nobody has heard of before to put on the service? I thought that was me. I thought I was doing that special. We're done with this. So this was an awesome look at the NES and Super NES games for the Nintendo Switch Online service. 
Psycho Dream is kind of fun. Um, Fire and Ice, maybe. Prehistoric Man kind of sucks. And Doomsday Warrior can go to hell. So let me know in the comments section down below what you think of these games. Did I ruin any of your childhood games? Did I play these games wrong and you're going to complain in the comments? You, you don't know retro games! Even though like nobody knows these games really, maybe beyond Fire and Ice. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check back with me tonight because we have some Nintendo Direct stuff to cover. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.